Peace and blessings, sis. How you doing? It's about to be the shortest live <clears throat> that I ever had to do. <clears throat> Listen. Peace and blessings, Brother Gary. I do these, I do these lives strictly out of obedience. You see, I'm scruffy. I'm ready to go to work. I want to talk to you shortly. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about obedience. And uh, I just share this out of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. So if my ministry or the voice that God has given me does not resonate with you, you know, that's fine. You know, just skip it or listen to the people that you're supposed to listen to. But I would appreciate it if you don't curse me. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, it's so funny how people don't realize what you know. Like, I appreciate that you don't talk negative. Oh, what is he talking about? You don't even know what you... You got a demon. You need to get delivered. That ain't God. You know what I'm saying? When people do that, I know it because your demons be attacking me every time you do it. So I'm not saying y'all that's on there, but people do that. Like They won't watch it live when it's live, but they'll purposely wait or they won't click it so they can watch it without it, sh without it showing it, showing you that they're on or they'll wait till later. They'll save it and wait till later and watch it live. So they can kind of like investigate what you're talking about and nitpick it like, you know what I'm saying? And judge it later. But you, when you operate in deliverance, what people don't know is like when you do that, all your demons, they just attack me. They just start attacking me like out of nowhere. I just start getting attacked with, with all your words. But I thank you that, in it, that the name of Jesus is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. They are safe. So I just say that because I don't really like doing the lies for that reason. I don't feel like getting attacked by people, demons and strongholds. Yeah, I'd rather just keep it to myself, but I do it out of obedience. I believe Christ came in the flesh. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, for honoring this live, honoring every person that got on, Father. Uh, giving them an ear to hear what the Spirit is speaking, God. Uh, I pray that this will bless them, encourage them, refine them. And I pray that whatever this means to them, that Holy Spirit, you will give them the language for them to hear it in their own understanding, God. Or in a way that makes sense for their life in Jesus. So we know all these wonderful, amen, hedges. I cover this live with the blood of Jesus. All these wonderful prophecies, you know. Oh, my bad. All these wonderful prophecies, like we're going to prosper. Year of the open door. Year of clear vision. We're going to do, we're going to exceed. We're going to take the galaxies. We're going to take the heavens of the heavens. We're going to take the stratosphere. We're, we're taking every nation. Amen. Praise God. Like I'm in agreement with all those things. Every prophetic word that God spoke through every person. Amen. Father, yes to your will and your way. But a man of God said this, that it's going to, that we need to be more effective in 2020. Apostle Arnold Stewart, the man that confirmed me in ministry, he said that we need to be more effective in 2020. So that means that we're going to go through some seasons of refinement and fine tuning to, in areas that we have been fruitful so that we can be even more fruitful. The Bible says every branch or tree in him that brings forth fruit, he purges it so that it can bring forth more fruit. So just receive this not as a rebuke, but more as a refining, like more as a purging so that we can be even more fruitful, even more effective in the things that God has called us to accomplish in 2020. Second Chronicles chapter 25, one and two, it says, Amaziah was 25 years old when he became the king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. Listen, verse 2, it says, And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a loyal heart. King James said, And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but his heart was not perfect with God. So he was doing everything that God wanted him to do by the sight, by the appearance. He was doing everything God wanted him to do, but his heart was not perfect. Now, that word perfect, it means to be whole. It means to be complete. It means to have uh, like to be filled or fulfilled, fulfilled, excuse me, fulfilled. 
It's like when you set out to do something and you don't get to do it all, it's you just don't have peace in your heart because you what you wasn't able to accomplish everything that you purposed in your heart to accomplish. That means that this individual, he was obeying God. He on the surface, he was doing everything that God wanted him to do. But it was something in his heart that was incomplete. His heart was divided. He, he wasn't doing it wholeheartedly, which means he was doing what God wanted him to do. But he want, it's possible that he wanted to do other things. But he said, you know what? I'm going to do what God wanted me to do. I want to say this because this is what God told me. He said in the year, he said in 2019, he said a lot of people obeyed. In 2019, he showed me, and this is including me. See, God talked to me first, and then I don't even, then he might tell me to share it with everybody. He said, in 2019, you was obeying me, but your heart wasn't perfect with me. So we be encouraging people, listen, we be preaching, listen, even if you don't feel like it, just obey. Even if you, you in the flesh, just do what God told you. Just sacrifice. Amen. That's a wonderful thing when you at a certain level. In 2019, that's the type of obedience we gave him. We didn't really want to do it, but we did it anyway. And God honored that. But I'm telling you, in 2020, if you got an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Like, God told me in 2020 that he's not receiving raggedy obedience. He's not receiving it. God told me in 2020 that he's not receiving raggedy obedience that's what he told me what is raggedy obedience raggedy obedience is what this king was doing he was doing everything that god told him but it was something in his heart that wasn't right so he was doing it but maybe he had a false motive he was doing it but he really wanted to do other things and we make the sacrifice to just obey god because we have to do it but i'm telling you in 2020 god said he's not accepting that raggedy obedience See, you can obey and still have a spirit of disobedience in you. You can obey God and still have rebellion in you. Like you can't force yourself. You can force your flesh to obey and still have a prideful heart. It's the truth. You can obey with a spirit of disobedience can be working on you and then you still force yourself to obey and, and i'm telling you it may be at times where god accepted that but i'm telling you if our attitude is not right if our motive is not right god is not accepting it god is not accepting it i'm telling you he's not accepting it so if you need to pray and fast we need to be praying like david and say god created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me you know why because the same spirit that you carry in is on your obedience like if you like if you if god told you to do a ministry thing a service and you're like god i don't really want to do it why i gotta do it god and you got all this anger in your heart and you just don't want to do it and then you do it anyway yes you obey but the spirit that you carry that attitude that you carry in has now leavened the entire thing that you're doing for god so everybody can feel your attitude. Everybody can sense your anger. Everybody can sense your rebellion. Everybody can sense that you really don't have a passion to do this. It, that same attitude and that same spirit begins to leaven the entire lump of what God asked you to do. So now you're doing a God thing, but with the wrong spirit. That's what the disciples was doing. Jesus told them they had authority to call down from heaven, to bind and loose, and it would be released from heaven. That as they pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They understood that they had this authority to cause the reality of heaven to release on earth. But two of the disciples, they said, Jesus, if they don't receive us, should we rain down fire? Now, Jesus is the one that told them they can do that. They would have been walking in what Jesus permitted them to do. But Jesus said, listen. You don't even know what manner of spirit you in. Their spirit wasn't right. Even though they was using his authority and the authority that they gave him, that, that Jesus gave the disciples, he said that they was in the wrong manner of spirit. So you could be doing what God told you to do. You could be doing what you're permitted to do. You could be using your authority and rising up and taking the kingdom and your spirit not be right. But I'm telling you, we do that. God is not accepting it. He's not accepting it. 
And so if those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the spirit is speaking. But God told me that, I, you know, we, you know, for part of our ministry assignment, I had to write the vision for a new aspect of the ministry that we're developing. We're we, we doing a church plan. So I, I had to write the vision for everything that we've been discussing. I just didn't want to do it. I just like, ah, just because it's going to take a long time. And I was just wrestling with it. I started procrastinating. I was just like, ah, I just had to do it. So I did it. I finished it, right? When I finished it, when I went to go print it out, when I went to go print it out, something happened with my computer. It glitched. It Something I saved, it saved over the whole vision. 11 pages gone. I got to start from scratch. I was like, man, I felt so discouraged. I felt so discouraged, but the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance Jeremiah, how Jeremiah wrote a prophecy. He gave it to the king. The king threw it in the fire. Jeremiah was discouraged, but God told him, listen, you got to write it all over. And this time, add some stuff to it. Now, now I had to write it all over again. But then as I, as I meditated on it, God began to speak the same revelation to me. God was like, I let that whole thing happen. Because your spirit wasn't right when you was writing the vision. How you going to write a vision and you got a bad attitude about it? <laughs> I was like, wow, God, that was good. So God was like, I let that whole thing get deleted so you can write it all over again with the right attitude. You understand? See, when we write a vision, it got a spirit in it. Like when people read it is an impartation of the spirit and the grace that's in the vision so that when they read it, it come upon them and they run with it. But how I'm going to write a vision with the wrong spirit? Like, how would you write a vision with a bad attitude? Because now when they read the vision, there's an impartation of that same energy. I'm talking good. So I had to write the whole thing over, but I had to pray God created me a clean heart. I don't know why I'm feeling begrudgingly, God. I don't know. Maybe I feel like I got too much work I got to do. Maybe I feel like you giving me too much and I don't want to do everything on my own. Like I don't want to have to do all of this work. Whatever it is in me, God, cleanse me. If I got to fast so that I can have a renewed spirit, a renewed attitude, about my approach, about obeying God, then I have to do it. Because I'm telling you, God told me, he said, I'm not receiving raggedy obedience. He said, I'm not receiving it. So, you know what I'm saying? You could take it with a grain of salt. That's what he told me. I know it's true. He's not receiving it. So what is the quality of your, I know I'm just trying to obey. I know I got to do it. God, I do not want to do this, but I know I got to. Amen. You had a, if you had a baby level, amen. But we mature and we going into deeper places. God got greater. We talking about prosperity. God like, no, I'm not accepting any old thing. Like, nope, I'm not doing it. Like, and we're all capable of giving God what he want. He said, I'm not accepting raggedy obedience. Like, he's just not going to do it. So whatever we got to do to cause our heart to be right with him and our motives to be right, you got to fast, pray, confess, do get somebody to do deliverance on you. Whatever we got to do, we need to give God obedience, but with a right spirit. Psalms chapter one, blessed are those that delight in the law of the Lord. That word law mean instruction. Delight mean to take pleasure in it. The Bible says those people, those that delight in the law of the Lord, they'll prosper in whatever they touch to put their hands to, it'll prosper. They'll bring forth their fruit in their season. They'll be like a tree planted. Who? Those that delight in the law. In other words, those that take pleasure in God's instruction, not begrudgingly. See, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that if we give, the Bible says, let it, we got to give freely, a cheerful giver. If you're going to give a little, amen, you're going to receive a little. If you give bountifully, you're going to receive bountifully. But it says that God loves what? A, chill, a cheerful giver, not grudgingly. God told Moses, he said, he said, command the people to bring silver and gold. He said, everybody that bring it willingly, receive it. Anybody that does not bring it willingly, do not receive it. That's what God told Moses to do. Then God says in, in the New Testament that he loves a what? Cheerful giver. 
If there's a willing heart, it is accepted. That's Second Chronicles chapter 8. It said, if there's a willing heart, it is accepted. I'm telling you, he's not accepting any old type of raggedy obedience. If there's a willing heart, then it is accepted. That's Second Second Chronicles. Second Corinthians chapter eight, it says that in there. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not prophesying out my own mind. Bible says this. Bible says in second Corinthians chapter nine, that God love a cheerful giver, not grudgingly. But I submit to you that obedience is something that we give God. We give God our obedience. Like we give God our humility. We give God our will. But he said he love a cheerful giver. Not grudgingly. God don't want your grudging obedience. God will mess around. Pick somebody else. Amen. I'm not going to speak no more on that. But I pray that you receive it in the spirit of refinement that is intended. I don't intend it as a rebuke. If God, if you feel it as a rebuke, that's all God. Because I'm not. I, some of y'all, I'm not y'all leaders and stuff like that. So I'm not in a position to rebuke you. But just take it in the spirit of refinement. That if we want to see everything that God is promising us in 2020, the prosperity, the old, whatever is, you know, whatever word you received. Let's just make sure that the quality of our obedience is what God expect. I believe Christ came in the flesh. The Bible says that test the spirits. We be like, man, you got to try the spirit by the spirit. I never read that in the Bible. You don't try no spirit by the spirit. You know what I'm saying? The Bible tell you how you try the spirit. The Bible says, try the spirits to see if they are of God. Then it tell you the test. Any man that can that cannot confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that spirit is not of God. But if any man confess Christ come in the flesh, that is the Holy Spirit. Bible says that. That's 1 John chapter 4. Bible don't never say test the spirit by the spirit. Most of us don't even got a strong enough relationship with the Holy Spirit to even be testing people's spirits like you know what I'm saying? So we know it's the Holy Spirit by how they talk about Christ. I believe Christ came in the flesh. Huh? Peace and blessings, y'all. I love y'all. God bless. Let's get that obedience right.